Hey everyone, it's Joan is from the Automator, and we got a really cool video today for you. We found this example of how we can use AI to help assist our learning for the students in our course. And so we just signed up for a demo version of it. So we can only upload one hour of content. So what I'm going to show you here, which we'll now... Isaias, help explain this. So basically on the right side, you will see kind of like a, a chat bubble or whatever, but this is going to be on your site. So they're giving you a preview of how it's going to look like on your site. On the background, you see this white and so on, but that's that's not important because what that would be, the background there would be your website. So just imagine that you put this on the automator. When they join the site, they will see this little bubble on the right side. And if they click on it, they will see this chat window in which they can ask questions and here's the interesting part this is being fed from videos as you said you you uploaded what about an hour of video we had up to an hour so i i selected okay. what i from that course from the painless transition from v1 to v2 and that's the thing now what we're going to do is ask questions about differences between one and v1 and v2 and the ai is going to answer based on what we talked about in the course, which is amazingly good, actually. I like that. So what was interesting, because we did a quick demo, we were both really impressed of like, wow, yeah. this is really good. I was impressed at the same time, there was one part I didn't like, and maybe we can figure out how to get around it. Because we all know when you use ChatGPT for asking out hockey questions, it often comes up with bad results. Well, right. this, and let's say like, how did the auto execute change in V2? So let's see what it does here. So right. this is one, it should hopefully is in that hour that we uploaded. And what was cool was it cites, it gives you an answer, which is, you know, it's really, it gives you our answer. Honestly, that's a really cool part, right? And it puts in references to your video. However, when we did this, where we asked one that wasn't something we yeah, covered, we do. it was pulling from like probably the internet or somewhere. And we're like, okay, well, those aren't actually right. <laughs> So <laughs> exactly. Oh, look no, at that. But, yeah, it, it is doing oh. the right thing. It gave us enough information and oh, look at that. The title of the That's what I was saying. Yeah. yeah, okay, it changes. Now when you click on references, what does it say when you click on references there? There? Ah, there you go. And, oh, and it's you, can jump, you can literally click this and jump to that part of the course. Right, right, which I think is perfect. just amazing. Right, I, like I would like to know. So, for example, what would it make a list of the main changes between V one and V two? What are the main changes between V one and V two? Would it make a list of them? Even I'm not really sure if we talked about that in the. Where did the, our buttons go? Oh, you just went out of the session. So it says previous session. So if you click on it again, just click on the word. How did it? You go down. Go down. There. No. There. That's a button there, right? Yeah, no, I'm talking about we had preloaded buttons. Remember? Oh, yeah. Questions? yeah, but right now it's it seems to be that yeah, it, it was yeah. out of that section now. So so this is what we we had over on the left here. We we come up with a couple of default questions that someone might want to ask. For example, uh, I don't know what it would come up with. I'm I'm not really sure if we said specifically that, but based on the video that have been there, it should have, yeah, there we go. Handling errors. We meant, we mentioned that removal of legacy syntax. That's okay. So those are things that I did mention during our course. Now, if you go ahead and take a look at the references, it probably will point to parts of the video that mention that. So if you go to the references, yeah, there we go. So there's a few changes that if we had the full content, and oh, the fact that you can give a thumbs up and thumbs down, and hopefully that's it's good. actually attention to that. That's phenomenal. That's good. So, so if we come up with a with a question that is something that is not in the course, that's where it kind of like fails because this is kind of like connected to chat GPT, is it? And yeah. what what it means here is that if it doesn't have the answer from the video, then it will grab the information from what ChatGPT knows, which to our device is just not, doesn't have much information Early. about how to be too, right? So that's right now. But right so, now, yeah, let's see what it happened. So we didn't talk about creating a GUI on our course, I think. At least not in any sort of detail, which this is hopefully gonna provide some detail. 
you need to use the GUI command. Okay, it's going okay there, but let's see how it goes. Yeah, this is V1 code. Not so, that, so yeah, oh, that, that, that <laughs> the references have nothing to do with it, but okay. Well, maybe that's old. Maybe it'll finish that. All right, okay, I get it. I still totally love the overall concept and the fact that I just uploaded a couple videos and in about 30 minutes, I was able to start searching it, and that, that is really crazy power. Nope, didn't. No, no, so, so that is incorrect, but so that's where it kind of like fails. It fails right. when it is outside of the bounds of what the video contents were, but it's not that it's not going to answer. It's going to try to answer it, but it's going to be answering based off of information outside of the course, which might be incorrect. But we were really impressed by the fact that it grabs the information of what you talked. It actually gives the answers on with that context. So if I'm a person, I know my topic, the answer will be very good because they're going to be based off somebody who knows. The only problem here is if it is outside of the information, then it might be a little bit tricky. Right. And, and perhaps you, there is a way to limit to say, don't go search for external sources, only use our source. Right. right. So you would just answer like, oh, that was not covered in the video. Yeah. That might be a good thing that we might even suggest them. Hey, we should have an a, 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 an option that if the information is not within the video, then just to mention that this information is outside of the video. Right. Whatever. Yeah. And actually log the question. So the people that are actually in charge could go, oh, I, I see a bunch of questions around this topic. I should make a video on it. That would right. be great. Yeah. That would yeah. be very interesting. But Overall, like I said, I think this is yeah, um, this is amazing, right? It, it's yeah. the potential is there, you know. Who knows in a little bit of time where it's going? But qu the pricing wasn't horrible, so we're definitely going to look at this to have on our site. It's a little more problematic than that because in limiting it to within each course or going across stuff, at some point, hopefully, we we do something like this. Yeah. But yeah, very powerful. Big thumbs up of using AI. Yeah. This is the good thing. This is about connecting that to your website. So if you have a website and you're trying to get, or, or if you have content, in the video content, and you want people to be able to kind of like ask a question to the video, which is what you lose with videos. So whenever we create courses, the only thing that we lose is that people cannot ask us questions. We're just teaching, right? But if this way you have a way of asking questions to a video, technically, which is great. Yeah, because the answers that are coming back often, you know, like this one wasn't, but before that we had a, where it's almost verbatim what you mentioned in the course, but it's not quite. It is using AI to kind of massage what you said, right. Course, right? And that's where I'd say, because we're working on a, I had this idea before we even saw this. I was like, hey, let's extract all the subtitles all the from all of our 1300 YouTube videos on auto hotkey. Let's dump those into a database. And then because we have the subtitles and the timestamps, when people search, they could jump to that video at that point in time, right? The problem with that, of course, is it's only going to list the literally the words, or at least the words that YouTube thinks that we had, right? This is taking that a bit further and saying, oh, like, let me, let me go read that and understand it. And then explain it in a different yeah, way right kind right, of. right. Yeah. kind of use a little bit of ai to massage it and possibly improve the response that maybe we didn't cover exactly what you wanted and that's where it's just crazy good right so um, right. hope you enjoyed that video if you learned something here or liked the video please like the video it really helps us out that little like button there and subscribe we make uh, videos twice a week we release them largest auto hockey channel out there and uh have an awesome day cheers bye guys